हेलो गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते खुश मैं आपकी होस्ट और दोस्त डॉक्टर विनी कांट्रू मैं एक पल्मोलॉजिस्ट और क्रिटिकल केयर फिजिशियन हूँ इंद्रप्रस्थ अपोलो हॉस्पिटल्स नई दिल्ली में मैं आपके सामने फिर से एक एपिसोड लेकर आई हूँ डॉक्टर के के मेड टॉक्स का टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट नेग्लेक्टेड टॉपिक्स फॉर विच वी हैव अ स्पेशल गेस्ट मोर अबाउट दैट लेटर उसके बारे में कुछ और कुछ देर के बाद लेकिन अब हम चलते हैं हमारे 819th एपिसोड के हेडलाइंस ऑफ द डे पे सो व्हाट आर द हेडलाइंस फॉर टुडे द इंडियन मेडिकल एसोसिएशन अपोजेस एनी प्रपोजल ऑन टीचिंग आयुर्वेदा टू एमबीबीएस स्टूडेंट्स if we are teaching ayurveda to mbbs students then it is going to be a mixture of two of the important sciences we cannot negate the importance of both the sciences but they should not be mixed together if somebody wants to study ayurveda they can do it separately as opposed to the mbbs which involves the study of medicine and the allopathy which is related to treating many kinds of diseases Australia has to expand the roll out of the fifth covid vaccine shot. We have all seen there are so many available vaccines now in the kitty against covid-19 and every uh, nation is coming up with a newer kind of uh, vaccine which is acting in some other way. This is a good news because it is going to increase the armamentarium against this kind of disease which is covid-19 which has played havoc throughout the world study has revealed that there have been no new variants in the weeks following china ended its zero covid policy we all know we were scared the number of cases in china was very very high and we were thinking another kind of variant shouldn't come into the picture which is just making our life miserable again हमें इस बात की खुशी है कि चाइना की सर्च जो कोविड 19 की देखी गई थी उनकी जीरो कोविड पॉलिसी को एंड करने के बाद उसके बाद देखा गया है कि कोई ऐसा नया वेरिएंट जो वेरिएंट ऑफ कंसर्न हो नहीं पाया गया है ये एक खुशीजनक बात है इंडियन कैंसर सोसाइटी लॉन्च इज मंथ लॉग कैंसर अवेयरनेस कैंपेन जो इंडियन कैंसर सोसाइटी है वो इस पूरे महीने कैंसर अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम्स कर रही है क्योंकि इसी से हम लोगों में कैंसर की जानकारी बढ़ाते हैं द स्टडी रिवील दैट आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस टू डिटेक्ट इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ ब्रेस्ट कैंसर कीमोथेरेपी कैन बी वेरी वेरी यूजफुल हमने देखा है आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस किस तरह अपने पांव फैला रहा है हर किसी फील्ड में इंक्लूसिव इंक्लूडिंग दैट ऑफ मेडिसिन तो ये जो है इसका अर्ली डिटेक्शन ऑफ कैंसर्स के लिए भी यूज हो रहा है उसमें देखा गया है जब एक स्टडी की गई कि जो ब्रेस्ट कैंसर है उसे किस तरीके से हम जल्दी डिटेक्ट करें उसमें काफी यूजफुल साबित हो रही है चलते हैं बहुत जल्द अपने टॉपिक ऑफ द डे पे हमारा आज का टॉपिक बहुत ही जरूरी और नेग्लेक्टेड टॉपिक है वो है जीरियाटिक डिप्रेशन यानी कि ओल्ड एज में डिप्रेशन का होना इसके लिए हमारे साथ हमारे नए गेस्ट हैं आज जिनको मैं इंट्रोड्यूस करना चाहूंगी आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर देवांजन बैनर्जी हाय हाय योर म्यूट डॉक्टर देवांजन Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, yeah. you're you're very well audible now. Thank you so much for connecting to us. Thank you, Dr. Kanthru, and uh, thanks the Meditox team, and a warm welcome to our audience today. Very good evening. Let me tell you about Dr. Dibanjan Benerji. He has completed his post graduation in psychiatry and post doctoral in geriatric psychiatry from the esteemed National Institute of Mental Health. and neurosciences which is the nimhans bangalore he has been in the department of psychiatry nimhans for nearly a decade 
and headed the Student Welfare Committee there. Currently, he's affiliated with the Apollo Glen Eagles Multi Specialty Hospitals, Kolkata, as a consultant neuropsychiatrist and is the founder of Arogyam, a mental well being polyclinic in West Bengal. Dr. Banerjee is the recipient of several prestigious awards, including and has held several important national and international memberships. He is the convener Early Career Psychiatry Section, SARC Psychiatric Federation, and he acts as the Deputy Editor-in-Chief, Journal of Psychosexual Health, and Associate Editor, Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, and Assistant Editor, IPA Bulletin. Besides his clinical acumen, he is internationally known academician and researcher and has over whopping 110 peer-reviewed publications and is a regular columnist for several Indian dailies. He also works with Data Leads and Google News initiatives as an executive fact checker for fighting medical misinformation and promoting community awareness related to mental health. So much to your kitty, Dr. Uh, Banerjee. It's, it's so much of degrees, so much of knowledge and helping out with the mental health. It's really, really commendable. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction, Dr. Tansu. I think mental health is some place uh, in our country where we don't reach logo tak people nahi, But we are trying our level best you know, to raise the awareness and it's shows like this and uh, thanks to the organizers, thanks to you, we can reach out to more and more people about such important topics. So thank you once yes. again for having me here. Definitely. You're most welcome and thank you for sparing your precious, precious time. So we have known depression in, in many forms. It comes in any age. We all know it can be present in childhood, which is which is an age of enjoyment. However, it can be seen in very young people, in middle age group, as well as in older people. We have all seen that we might be ignoring signs of depression in the elderly population. So first of all, let us know what is geriatric depression? Ye geriatric depression kya hota hai? Yeah, as you rightly said, uh, Dr. Kanthru, I think depression, uh, firstly, we have to understand or I want to tell you all about this, that it's not a bad feeling or a bad feeling depression. There is a difference between sadness and depression. So we all feel sad at different times. If I do not have a good experience, I don't have a good experience, I don't have a problem with my job, or I don't have any personal issues, then quite naturally, I feel bad. But if that continues for a long time, if it's a bad feeling, if it's a bad feeling, if it's a bad feeling, if it's a bad you continuously start feeling hopeless, negative about yourself. You start having wishes that it's better not living then probably it is a diagnosed depression, clinical depression. Like our pulmonologist, like tuberculosis, COVID, or any infection, uh, diabetes, pressure, hypertension, like this is a disease, so clinical depression is also a disease that is treatment. Hota hai. Having said that, as you rightly said, that it can be in every age, and there are different types of depression. Geriatric depression or old age depression is actually very common. Hai. So, Indian data, ke se, ev, roughly one in every five individuals above 60 years, 60 ke upar mein, jinke umar hai, uh, senior citizens, per paanch mein se karib ek ya do mein aise depression ka lakshan dikhai deta hai. And it is a little bit different from what we feel. So, uh, you know, they will not directly mention about feeling sad or feeling low. Rather, physical symptoms zada hone lagenge. Jinka pehle se dard hai, pain ka problem hai, kaafi common hai, buzurgo mein ki ghutno ka dard ya haath, pair ka dard, gardan ka dard, woh barne lagenge. They start getting very, very preoccupied about their own health. Many people come to us just telling, you know, doc, that I, I am not having proper bowel habits. You know, I feel that something is wrong with my body. I am not feeling all right. But if you ask them, how is your mood? They won't tell you that you are feeling low. Which is, which is the common sign of depression. So that is why it is very easily missed 
वो क्लिनिक्स में मिस हो जाता है तो हम ट्रीटमेंट नहीं कर पाते हैं सो आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू रिमेंबर ऑल्सो अगर किसी को शुगर है तो यू कैन सी द डायबिटीज इज इंक्रीजिंग द शुगर लेवल्स आर हाई प्रेशर बर्ड जा सकता है यू नो द बी पी कैन फ्लक्चुएट मोर एंड मोर मैनी टाइम्स दे फील वेरी लोनली यू नो दे मे जस्ट कम एंड टेल यू दैट यू नो आई थिंक माई लाइफ इज गॉन इन अफ एंड आई जस्ट डोंट फील लाइक लिविंग एनी मोर एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंटली जो गैस्ट्रो इंटेस्टिनल सिस्टम होता है जो डाइजेशन का प्रॉब्लम्स होते हैं गैस्ट्राइटिस का इशूज होते हैं वो काफी हद तक बढ़ जा सकते हैं एंड स्लीप इज अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम एंड एंगजाइटी लास्टली आई वुड लाइक टू मैंशन एंगजाइटी काफी जिटरी हो जाते हैं रेसलेस एक जगह पे बैठना बैठ नहीं सकना एक हमेशा सा एक लगना कि कुछ ना कुछ लग रहा है मुझे मुझे रेस्ट में नहीं लग रहा है मुझे चलना चाहिए कहीं पे बाहर जाना चाहिए हर चीज में एक डर रह, रह जाना आई थिंक दिस दीज आर वेरी कॉमन सिम्टम्स ऑफ डिप्रेशन इन ओल्ड एज दैट वी नीड टू कीप इन माइंड so uh, we have many people uh, who are connected to us gauri shankar dharmraj ji has asked a question which i would like to take up later but he is from chennai so most of the time he is requesting that we speak uh, in english because they don't know uh, hindi much we would try uh, uh, try our level best that we are translating some of the important sentences in hindi also so we have seen uh, that what is geriatric depression and how common is this uh, disease in the elderly and one important message which has come out of this fir- uh, first question is that uh, we should not be uh, you know kind of masking these symptoms with the fear that uh, we may be judged based on our uh, symptoms that we are having depression look you are so much in age and still you have not been able to cope up ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए क्योंकि जैसे डॉक्टर बैनर्जी हमें बता रहे हैं कि डिप्रेशन भी एक डिजीज ही है जिस तरीके से बाकी डिजीजेस होती हैं ये भी एक डिजीज है और ये ट्रीटेबल है यदि आप ये सोचते रहेंगे कि बाकी लोग क्या सोचेंगे तो प्लीज इसको सोचना बंद कर दीजिए क्योंकि एक फुलफिलिंग लाइफ जीने के लिए ये बहुत जरूरी है कि आपकी अंडरलाइंग कंडीशन को डिटेक्ट किया जाए और उसको ट्रीट किया जाए वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट to detect your underlying condition and get it treated so if we talk of geriatric depression how is it different from the depression which is suffered by people in other age groups kis tarike se hum dekhte hain ki baki age group se ye alag depression hai kya kuch aise signs hain whereby the symptoms are masked and people don't come forward or there are some other signs and symptoms which are present in this particular age group kindly unmute yourself it is spontaneous getting muted yeah sorry so thank you uh, dr kanth ji i think as you rightly said in the beginning every age has its own takes in terms of depression and uh, old age specifically has many social and physical factors let's take the physical factors there are number of medical illnesses that come in most of us you know who see patients above 60 years they come with a host of other medical conditions jaise ki diabetes hypertension thyroid prostate ka problem post menopausal issues in women so all these factors the up and down of the hormones age frailty jinko hum bolte hain with a you know gradually as the age progresses all of them have a bearing on the mind a bearing on the mood and depression number of social factors exist particularly after covid 19 scenario many seniors are separated from their children you know uh, what we call as a empty nest phenomena that you know abhi with time a lot of family is nuclear so parents are here probably the children are somewhere else they only can barely connect with them digitally <coughs> sorry i'm very sorry <coughs> sorry so uh, many of them are living alone and probably are also living separately from their spouses the other factor is you know there are two two types of uh, senior citizens one who live at their homes 
one who live in old age homes or senior citizen assisted care facilities so for them there are other challenges as well now these factors also have a bearing on depression finally as you asked how is it different uh last question mein maine mention kiya tha ki symptom ke hisab se agar aap kisi se puche ki if you are feeling low if you are feeling sad in old age people may not tell you that rather they will be more focused on their bodily problems so that is why many times in old age people do not really go come to us for the first time they go to our medicine colleagues or they go to our geriatrician colleagues with those problems and then they probably get referred to us sleep is a major issue anxiety is a major issue har cheez mein ek dar baith jana sometimes having unnecessary fear which we call as delusion that probably somebody is following them somebody will do something to them uh, suspiciousness shak hona kisi ke upar that is very common the other thing if we talk about signs i think a lot of pathology of depression ki jaise wo hota hai jo jo changes hota hai dimag mein they are little bit synonymous with dementia or one we tell you know alzheimer's disease uh, certain parts of the brain which are affected in memory which are affected in terms of uh, which slows down your thinking which slows down your movements those parts are affected in geriatric depression isliye kafi time pe jab logo ko stroke hota hai if anybody suffers from a stroke after that we can actually find signs of depression in them because blood clots even if there are small blood clots somebody who has high blood pressure has a risk of this tiny blood clots throughout the brain over a period of time have the risk of producing this geriatric depression so a type of geriatric depression is also called as post stroke depression or vascular depression jo ki stroke ke baad normally 60 65 years ke baad hona bahut common hai so as we can see there are a lot of different associated factors lot of physical illness related factors social factors aur jis tarike se depression hota hai aur jis tarike se wo manifest karta hai insaan mein wo kafi alag hai so the chance of missing out the chance of you know probably not getting treated is also very high and as you uh, beautifully mentioned stigma is also very very high normally agar hum kisi ko sunte hain to hum bolte hain theek hai aap to itna kuch experience kar liye you can also cope with this but depression is an illness and it needs treatment you cannot just cope up with depression definitely so so if you are suffering from any of these symptoms which we just spoke about please go and get yourself checked by a psychiatrist especially who is trained in geriatric medicine like our doctor dr banerji so we need to be very very quick in uh, uh, you know uh, taking out these symptoms and taking out the fear of discussing these symptoms with your doctor because once there is fear of discussing your symptoms with the doctor you will not be very very clear and forthcoming about your problems and also i think we should discuss that how a family can help detect the early signs of uh, signs and symptoms of depression in the elderly we as children we all face it our uh, you know parents are getting aged they might be having certain kind of problems health related issue so how can children and close family members help their parents and their relatives who may be suffering from depression are there any early signs and symptoms where a child or uh, uh, the family member should think of getting their parents checked from a psychiatrist yeah i think that's a very very relevant question dr kanthru thank you uh, if we are able to detect it early we will be able to treat early and that saves uh, a lot of suffering so uh, i think there are few common signs nothing pretty out of the blue but uh, we need to keep a watch on their usual behavior agar hum kisi ko dekhe ki wo apne behavior se kuch alag hi tarike se behave kar raha hai jaise bahut introvert ho gaya hai the person is becoming socially very isolated not interacting much with people is extremely preoccupied with his or her physical symptoms let's say uh, 
he or she has a stomach pain or a small infection but even after that becomes better they keep on telling about it and they cannot focus beyond it uh one very very important factor in old age depression is memory and memory doesn't mean simply forgetting they may start misplacing things problems in multitasking they may not remember something which you have told them they may forget probably something you have told in the morning they may tend to forget it in the afternoon uh jaise khayal nahi rakhna you know you tell three four things and they easily tend to miss out on one or two somebody goes to the shop and then misses out on a list uh you give them four or five tasks in a sequence and they tend to miss out one after other so if it happens in the context of a stressful factor uh because another factor in old age is loss you know many people lose their spouses lose their family members sometimes a big factor which we often neglect i'm sorry i forgot to mention is retirement so imagine somebody who has been financially independent head of the family one fine day uh they the job is not there and many times they have to rely on the other person for their financial independence their social circle gets limited so this autonomy this freedom ye jo ek banda hamesha se swatantra raha hai independent raha hai and one fine day after retirement the person suddenly feels that i do not have any work to do so how do i participate in society meaningfully i think that creates a big vacuum i do not intend to say that retirement brings depression retirement brings in a fantastic phase of life where you can go back to enjoying yourself but it definitely in some individuals create that sense of vacuum which leads to the risk of depression now if you see somebody very overtly introvert a uh, sudden change of behavior lacking sleep losing weight um, food uh, suddenly has developed certain changes in food preference memory issues uh, is become quite irritable bahut chote chote baat pe gussa ho jata hai jo ki unka previous behavior jaisa nahi hai i think these are very common signs to identify that somebody is probably going into clinical depression not to mention there are certain red flag signs certain emergency signs jinko hum bolte hain agar bahut zyada weight loss hua agar ekdam khana chhod diye agar ekdam ghar se bahar nahi nikalte they are totally isolating themselves and specially if they have expressed suicidality if they have expressed that they don't want to live anymore may kabhi it comes indirectly sometimes ki shayad agar hum nahi rehte to acha hota you know in a passive way but that is very very important to identify because suicide rate in old age depression is very high and especially in our family setting many times we are not able to monitor them and if they try if by chance unfortunately there is an attempt the chance to revive them is very very less so we have to prevent it at any cost very very right because in elderly people the level of recovery which happens is less because their systems are not very very robust so if they try at suicidal attempts and damage any kind of uh, their body systems or organ systems for them it becomes very very difficult to be revived and getting better to their basic self which is very difficult as compared to detecting the problem early so let's come to the next question uh, are the symptoms similar to any other kind of medical illness is there a difference between uh, depression in old age or there are some differential diagnoses which should be kept in mind and which should be important for us clinicians who see elderly people in our clinic with some other medical related issues so when can we as clinicians send you the patients after ruling out certain conditions let's discuss that yeah i think that is very important when we have a cross disciplinary discussion you know especially that you are a critical care expert and pulmonologist i think one of the very common area where this intersects is obstructive sleep apnea and obesity so especially you know we get a lot of individuals who suddenly come and tell us that i am feeling excessively drowsy excessively fatigued throughout the day and then we come to know probably they are using cpap or they are not regularly using cpap they have a diagnosed osa so what i intend to say is that 
because depression involves old age depression involves a lot of physical symptoms most of the times these individuals and because of the stigma towards psychiatry they may actually end up going to all our medical clinics of different fields and if you feel that you know this you de definitely you can conduct your own array of tests or investigate on your own uh, part it but if you feel that this has a basis of stress or this has a temporal relationship with a particular incident in his or her life obviously that's an indicator i think a very very important factor here is every single non communicable chronic illness has a bearing on depression and it's mutual so diabetes hypertension osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis any connective tissue disorders you know inflammatory bowel disease uh Uh, any kind of infection now that post covid long covid we have seen a lot of increase in depression and anxiety cases particularly if you have prescribed steroids to any individuals for the first time and the individual has a history of psychosis or depression in the past i think it becomes very important to keep our antenna raised especially i think depression is our almost an inevitable accompaniment of untreated diabetes rheumatoid arthritis uh, lupus uh, obstructive sleep apnea uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and uh, you know especially a very very important field of psycho oncology cancers uh, because uh, there is a lot of social factors involved hiv so the, these are things you know which which uh, intersect continuously but one most important thing would be dementia so a lot of our neurology colleagues they get this individuals with forgetfulness even we get and in our neurocognitive clinic so uh, the individual may not come to you or come to us with any uh, psychiatric complaints at all the family member may just begin telling you know this person has forgotten way or has started forgotten words but this particular feature as we all know is very well known phenomenon of pseudo dementia and in old age depression can actually be a harbinger of dementia so many times the person presents with depression gets treated and then gradually progresses to a mild alzheimer's variant or somebody who already has dementia that person may you know feel uh, shy about it feel worried about it that i am not able to uh, uh, probably do like others i am not able to remember things like others i am not able to meaningfully participate with others and thus develop depression so i would like to put it in two ways uh, every individual who has a sudden onset memory loss in old age on the background of some other factor social factors chronic illness let's keep our antenna raised for late life depression or geriatric depression on the other hand if somebody develops dementia the person is not immune to depression so of course at that point of time if there is a sudden worsening of memory sudden change in sleep cycle sudden change in eating and dietary patterns and weight loss again we have to keep our antenna raised for depression because it's a very very common comorbidity also parkinsons a very very common accompaniment with parkinsons disease yes very well said all these symptoms signs diseases are very well connected with depression and as you said the the plethora of non communicable diseases in this age group per se somehow leads to some amount of depression in this age including less physical uh, you know ability and mobility which is known in these kind of uh, people and age group when their mobility decreases they do get bouts of depression which should be taken care of let's look at the people who are connected with us i would like to welcome and thank dr ns sharda who connects to us every wednesday thank you dr n s sharda uh, vikas sanyal ji is there sapna jain is there good evening rameshwar singh panwar ji kaushik chakravarti thank you so much for connecting ganesh ambhore satendra singh gauri shankar dharmraj i hope we uh, have been able to discuss things in english and you are following the discussion very well and let me take up your question which is there for uh, dr banerji he wants to know that diabetic depression is common as you already described so uh, 
other than counseling are there any medications for diabetic depression yeah thank you for the question i just like before answering that i just like to take one point from the last question the thing which i probably missed and is very important is pain so a lot of older individuals senior citizens they suffer from different types of pain including osteoarthritis you know uric acid related problems gout uh, different types of uh, other types of arthritis so one of the very common indicators of depression is a sudden unexplained increase in pain and lowering of pain threshold so that gives us an important clue coming to your present question uh, of course we do not term it separately as diabetic depression but yes any depression with diabetes it is mutual so the depression will increase the sugar levels and the increased sugar levels can be an indicator of depression and many times we do not even need to change the medicines of diabetes we treat the depression and the sugars normalize on their own because both of them are related to a common pathology so yes i should highlight this factor that depression in old age can be fully treated and antidepressants that we prescribe uh, there are standard antidepressants which are used in old age at a standard dose but you have to remember that it is always better to discuss the treatment that the doctor is giving you with the doctor as to what effects can you expect when can you expect how long do you need to take the medicines what side effects can you expect because if these discussions do not happen if you just stop taking it after 3 days 4 days there will be no effects unfortunately our medicines like any other chronic illness uh they need to be continued at least for 4 to 6 weeks for effects to even start appearing they're not like paracetamol or an analgesic that you take and within 6 hours your pain vanishes so you need to probably be a little bit patient and uh, the medicine start working within 2 weeks start taking full effects within 4 weeks and then you need to continue it up to a certain course as your doctor suggests so having this discussion this dialogue with your treating doctor and trust me all of us are sitting there to explain things to you so nobody will reject your questions but make sure that these discussions happen possibly uh, right in time before you start your treatment and along with that there are different types of psychotherapies uh, counseling is probably not the right word because it's a very generic term so psychotherapies are one to one sessions with a qualified clinical psychologist which targets specific symptom domains and has certain specific approaches uh, it needs at least depending on the condition 6 to 10 sessions which are held once a week or once in two weeks and the most common many of you must have heard about cognitive behavior therapy because our thoughts the negative thoughts that come in depression that kind of lead to how we act and behave so the therapy is targeted to modify the thinking patterns so that it also reflects on our behavior but as we have to understand medicines and therapy they are not supplementary to each other but they are complementary so they are not replacement of one another the best effect always happens when both are combined so always have that discussed with your doctor right that is the that is the best way of describing it all we have sartar singh ji associated with us avad kishore rathor ji namaskar to you also we have vinayak sharma good evening to you rekha batara uh, uh, dr n s sharda who was actually mentioning financial problems as an important factor which we already discussed rameshwar singh panwar ji has a question which i would like to take he says his wife who is aged 68 years as a patient of thyroid and taking 125 microgram of thyroid supplement is always feeling depressed what is your expert advice yeah thank you again uh, for this question i think um, again there are certain things we need to know whether when was the last thyroid test done uh, you know whether uh, the supplement is adequate for her because if it is too much or too less both the times hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism can be linked to depression uh but if there is a recent change of dose that can contribute to some depressive symptoms particularly in patients with hypothyroidism there is a lot of fatigue there is a lot of tiredness 
and that itself is a symptom that coincides with depression so if she is feeling depressed all the time i think it's better to get her evaluated by a psychiatrist and we need to understand if a clinical depression has set in then probably along with adjusting the medicine of the thyroid supplement the thyroid supplement dose we also separately need to treat her with antidepressants i think that will be the best way to go and also please check if the sleep is adequate because one important thing in older people they tend to sleep more during the day time so increase sleep during the day time or phase shift so sleeping late and waking up late that is distinctly associated with depression in older people so the more you spend time in old uh, in in bed in day time the more probably is the risk of you getting depressed or increasing the depression if it is already there right so uh, another question we have seen that many people have the fear of taking medication out of the fear of side effects so this happens with any and every kind of allopathic medi medicine and we see it every day day in and day out especially so with depressed uh, you know antidepressants so people are very very uh, fearful of uh, taking these medications out of the fear of side effects on similar question lines satendra singh has a very valid question so one is one part of the question is what are the most common side effects and when should we start of immediately seeing our doctor if these kind of symptoms are developing and the second part of the question is that are these medications lifelong or any particular duration they can be taken and later on once we are treated we can think of stopping these medications so thank you so much for the questions i think these are the questions that we face commonly in our clinics like every person after we prescribe them they leave uh, and before that they ask these questions to us so <clears throat> to answer the first question i always tell my patients this that you take water or you take any type of food it has an effect it has a side effect anything that enters your body be it allopathy homeopathy ayurveda any form of medication food water it will have both effect and side effects most of the times we are able to see the effects we are not able to see the side effects the problem with searching for them online is google will give you 100 side effects of every medicine but google will not tell you that out of that the top 2 is faced only by probably 2% of the population which means that you are likely not even to face any of them so what i intend to say is that every individual reacts differently to every medicine there are certain people who are allergic even to paracetamol so it is always better that whichever medicine is being prescribed to you as i mentioned you sit with your doctor spend 5 minutes ask him three things him or her three things one what when can i expect the effect of this medicine what side effects can i expect from this medicine if the side effects happen what should i do should i reduce the dose should i call you should i take any other substitute and how long should i continue this medicine i need to be clear with something at the beginning none of the psychiatric medicines are addictive it is same as any other allopathic medicines our medicines are not exotic they don't come from a different planet so it's all about uh, the non communicable diseases the chronic illnesses like in antibiotic course you have 5 days 7 days 14 days we do not have such a short period of time let's say like dr kanthu ji uh, you know your field somebody has asthma so you know sometimes you need to take the inhaler for a long period of time sometimes lifetime and if it is only seasonal then you need to take when and where the problem start so similarly when we give uh, antidepressants let's say we are talking about old age depression here we first give a course for 3 to 6 months at an optimum dose now if you have any side effects the common side effects of it varies between the different classes of medicine mostly it can be a bit of gastritis nausea problems with digestion more of sleep sometimes nightmares sometimes a bit of increase in anxiety constipation these are the common ones now if you face face this i think it's very important that you discuss with your treating physician but mostly it is self limiting and the body will take care of it within one or two weeks so you don't need to worry 
but if you face them persistently obviously your doctor will change the medicines based on which medicine suits you best so there is no one rule that one medicine is fit for one person it's always a trial and error method so it's always better to have continued discussion with your treating psychiatrist and as as to how long you need to take if the first episode of depression happens the rule is you usually take for 6 months then your doctor starts reducing the dose gradually you know it's not that one fine day snap you stop the medicine because then problems start appearing again like there is a way to start there is a way to stop best left to the doctor to decide that so you talk to him or her and you start reducing the medicine gradually they will warn you that okay if while reducing the medicine you have some side effects coming up then or you again start having depression coming up then probably you come to me or you do not stop there you continue the medicine something like that let's say you have stopped the medicine for let's say 20 to 30 people in every 100 people they will probably not have another episode but if you have another episode of depression for any reason that is more than one episode it is better that you continue for at least 2 to 5 years and for some people who have repeated episodes if they are stopping medicine it needs to be continued lifelong the proportion varies the rate of response varies how long you need to take medicine varies from every individual to individual right very pertinent question from ali nazakat who is connected to us he says are there sometimes features of attention seeking syndrome in elderly and how to deal with it yeah so uh, thank you for the question i think we have first have to understand what is attention seeking now let's say somebody sleeps alone and uh, somebody is uh, you know probably doesn't have a proper social support or uh, the children live far away or they probably live in a distance and they are not regularly in communication because of different logistic reasons so it's natural for anybody to seek attention in that case i don't think attention seeking can be considered abnormal or pathological in such circumstances however sometimes as i mentioned in depression there is a lot of tendency to self monitor or self observe symptoms so then they can repeatedly come to the family members and tell that look this is going wrong look you have given me the medicine but still pain is not going down look constipation is not getting cleared up you know i am still not passing motion properly look still the urine is this kind of in color so there can be many kind of this preoccupation with the physical attributes and that can be a form of attention seeking because doctor shopping or recurrent doctor visits is also an indicator that a person is probably suffering from anxiety and depression in old age right we have one very unique question and it is from uh, rukmini rana she wants to know going to washroom too frequently is that a sign of depression in old age um not really um it may be you know of course uh, probably the first thing we would suspect if it is in a male individual probably if it is due to prostate problems uh, very commonly in both the genders it can be due to urine infection uh you know for individuals for uh, ladies it can be post menopausal but i think again as i mentioned if the other fields if medical specialties have already evaluated and nothing has been found and the individual repeatedly goes to the bathroom and probably doesn't uh, uh, urinate and then comes back every time and then still tells that okay the person has to go repeatedly without any apparent reason then maybe maybe we need to suspect that it can happen due to stress and it's not happening due to a medical illness i need to clarify here that not everything that cannot be explained by medical causes is depression but at the same time if our medicine colleagues have evaluated somebody and nothing has been found an opinion from the psychiatrist is taken to understand if there is any other underlying cause or stress related cause because sometimes it stays invisible right anand ambali ji wants to know the role of ect in depression among the elderly what are the precautions which need to be taken 
Oh, thank you, um, Dr. Anand. I think that's a, that's a beautiful question. And I was almost about to say it. Uh, ECT or electroconvulsive therapy, I know many of you have seen it in movies and have read about it and scared about it. But let me be very clear. ECT is a wonder treatment. It, uh, we, uh, back there at Nimhans, we used to administer roughly 30 to 40 patients each day. And whatever is depicted in movies or shown commonly that creates this panic among people is totally not right. Long, long back, it was probably given forcefully. But now the practice of ECT is extremely scientific, civilized, and it's done with the presence of a psychiatrist and anesthetist under proper anesthesia, only a very, very brief amount of current is passed to the brain in a controlled procedure. And it has scientific evidence that it can serve as life-saving in individuals who are suicidal. In fact, it is one of the treatment with minimum amount of side effects. The side effects which you take once medicines come in your system even are not there. And some individuals who do not respond to medicines even they start responding after the course of ECT is given. For any further information, if any of you are interested in reading, um, I had written something on Telegraph on ECT. Please, you can Google it. It is freely available. Also, you can go to the Nimhans website and check on the ECT information manual for the caregivers. It beautifully explains the role of ECT in depression. Also, back there uh, at Nimhans, we ourselves had done a short movie and educational short film which our students had acted in. Um, I had scripted it and uh, one of our other consultants, Dr. Preeti Sinha, had directed it. It is freely available on YouTube. For any of you interested, please Google electroconvulsive therapy, rekindling hopes and busting myths and type Nimhans and you will get it. It has both versions, a 40-minute version and a 15-minute version. And uh, it will basically give you the entire answers to how ECT, how effective ECT is in depression, particularly in old age. Right. Thank you for that information, Dr. Banerjee. Uh, I think some of the questions are repetitions of what we have already discussed. I would suggest all our uh, uh, attendees today to go to the recording of this very episode, which will be available both on Facebook as well as Twitter as well as on medtalks.in. So it is very freely available. You can uh, re-listen to this discussion and all of your uh, these kind of uh, problems and doubts will be cleared once you listen to our discussion again. Last but not the least, uh, this is a very pertinent, very important question. What can we do for mental hygiene in elderly people and any specific diets to be followed for these kind of people. Thank you, Dr. Kantruji. I think this was kind of the, uh, the showstopper question at the end. Uh, we all talk about physical hygiene. I think we have been very careful about physical hygiene post-COVID. I always make it a point to stress on mental hygiene part of it as well. What can we do to keep our minds hygienic? Nothing very special, nothing very exotic. I think it's important that we understand that mental health is important. It starts with that. Charity begins at home. If we feel that our mental well-being is challenged, our stress is probably crossing a line, it is important to share it with our social circles and seek professional help. If you know somebody who is facing these problems, and here is why this show becomes so important, please encourage him or her to seek professional help. There is no specific diet. It's important that, like in any other uh, types of healthy diet that we discussed. It is important to cut down on carbs, on fat, probably have a balanced proportion of vegetables and fruits in your diet. Try to cut down on sugars and uh, caffeinated drinks, empty calories as you age because the body processes it less. Have an active lifestyle. Uh, we all know that recently the Lancet Commission on Dementia has come up with a wonderful report that 40% of dementia risk can be reduced if lifestyle factors can be modified. So cutting down on smoking, alcohol, at least an active exercise regime per day, digital detox. I think uh, half of our lives is spent on screen now. 
so it's great to have a good walk with friends in the evening rather than whatsapping them and finally at the end of the day or in the beginning or any time in the middle even if you can find 15 minutes for yourself to do what you like probably just hum to a favorite song or probably look at your favorite music video or talk to a friend whom you want i think that me time becomes extremely important we all have time for everything else in the world apart from ourselves so if we can learn to do that i think that solves half of the riddle so stay right. well and uh, i think it's very important that we take especially if something that covid has taught us is to take care of our mental hygiene besides the physical one definitely very very well explained dr banerji bata rahe hain ki hame kis tarah apni mental health hygiene ka dhyan rakhna chahiye ye jo mental health hygiene hoti hai bahut hi similar ya bilkul uh, usi tarike ki hoti hai jaise hum apni physical health ka khayal rakhte hain to isme koi special diets nahi hote hain alag se aap apni diet mein sabziyon ka sevan और फ्रूट्स का सेवन बढ़ा दीजिए क्योंकि इनमें एंटीऑक्सीडेंट्स होते हैं और सभी रिपोर्ट्स में चाहे वो फिजिकल हेल्थ के लिए हो या मेंटल हेल्थ के लिए हो एंटीऑक्सीडेंट्स बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण काम करते हैं हमारी बॉडी को हेल्दी रखने के लिए वहीं दूसरी तरफ यदि हम अपना जो वेट है वो एक हेल्दी रेंज में रखते हैं तो सारी डिजीज को दूर रखा जा सकता है जिसमें मस्किलोस्केलेटल प्रॉब्लम्स भी आती हैं तो मस्किलोस्केलेटल आपने ये वर्ड आज के डिस्कशन में बहुत ज्यादा सुना होगा क्योंकि एल्डरली लोगों की मेन प्रॉब्लम जो आती है वो पेन के कारण होती है या कम मोबिलिटी के कारण होती है तो यदि आपका स्केलेटल सिस्टम स्ट्रॉन्ग होगा ओल्ड एज में भी आप अपना वॉक कर पाएंगे तो नथिंग लाइक दैट आपकी जो मेंटल हेल्थ हाइजीन है अपने आप मेंटेन हो जाएगी वहीं दूसरी तरफ यदि आपको डायबिटीज है तो शुगर का सेवन बंद कर दे नमक कम खाएं अपने हाइपरटेंशन को कंट्रोल में रखें सारी जितनी भी डिजीजेस आपको है या ऐसा लगता है कि आपको उसके होने का शक है जाकर टेस्ट जरूर कराएं तो फिजिकल हेल्थ जो होती है वो मेंटल हेल्थ से हमेशा रिलेटेड होती है वहीं दूसरी तरफ अगर आपको लगता है कि आपकी मेंटल हेल्थ अफेक्टेड है तो हिचकिचाए नहीं किसी भी साइकेट्रिस्ट से मिलके अपने जो डाउट्स हैं उनको क्लियर करने की कोशिश करें क्योंकि यदि हम एक्सेप्ट करेंगे कि मेंटल हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम है तभी हम उसके जो सोल्यूशंस हैं उसकी तरफ बढ़ेंगे यदि हम ये सब चीजें इग्नोर करते हैं तो पहले स्टेप के तरफ भी नहीं बढ़ पाते हैं ये सब चीजों का ध्यान रखिए अपनी खुशी का ख्याल रखिए अपने लिए पंद्रह बीस मिनट निकालिए और वो करिए जिसमें आपको आनंद आता है आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू डॉक्टर बैनर्जी for connecting to us today and sparing your valuable time with us a very small small token of appreciation from the team here in in med talks from us a small little certificate which i would uh, uh, like to show you we will be sending to you through email shortly thank you so much thank you so much everyone for connecting to us and stay healthy stay fit jai hind thank you so much take care bye bye